Hello everybody, this is Chaff Commander Coffee back with another episode of Dominions 4 Thrones of Ascension Random Nation Gen. Saltnoham is doing very well in its war against Syria, the Dustwalker Pharaohs. However, there has been a very special event this turn. We have received a message from Syria, and I think I know exactly what this message is. Uh, the AI likes to send you a message on two occasions. One time or when they declare war on you, and another time where, you know, well, you'll have to see if you don't know already. Um, and if you know already, then you probably want to see what happened. So, we cast Augury, and didn't find anything. Uh, we cast a few bowls of blood, uh, a Gnome Law, and another Augury, we found no magic sites. The only person that found a magic site was Ufanisi, our Witch Doctor, again. He's been finding quite a lot of magic sites, he's pretty good. Uh, he found a farm of plenty, which provides 50 supply points uh, in a wasteland province. It's kind of useful, I suppose, but not particularly. Um, they're just going to move straight back to Nom, and the other place that we searched was here in Exobothia, where we found, we found nothing there either. So they're just going to move to Mexico and start doing some research and some crafting. Um, we captured 22 blood slaves in Mexico. Um, there was... There's not too much unrest there, so we're gonna we're going to blood hunt there again. And there were some unexpected events. An unexpected event has occurred in Golem Range. Uh, the local lawman has been found frolicking with fairies in the wilderness instead of carrying out his duties. You useless lawman, what are you doing? <laughs> we have enemies on the border. You can't be frolicking with fairies. <laughs> useless lawman. Oh, oh well. Um. Now I've been thinking about some of the items I can start forging this turn. Um, so perhaps some interesting combos that I can do. Uh, I will, I will look at that later. Uh, an unexpected event has occurred in Valgard. Locust swarms are eating the crops and causing widespread panic. Twenty unrest and minus 139 gold from the treasury. Uh, the unrest is dropping slowly, I suppose. But yeah, Valgard has had a lot of bad events over the course of this campaign. Uh, there might be a site that causes misfortune? No, it has two luck, just like my Dominion, so... No, it should It's just a bit unlucky, I suppose. Sorry, Valgard. An event has occurred in Manace. A local wizard has been lynched after allegations of turning a peasant into a frog. His magical resources have been transported to the lab. Fire gems and astral pearls. Well, yeah, that's why you shouldn't... I mean, it's just peasants being peasants, I suppose. The goblins didn't like a wizard and they strung him up on a tree for turning one of them into a frog. I mean, if he's got fire gems and astral pearls, he probably can't even turn them into frogs. That would be a nature mage. You silly peasants, you're lynching the wrong wizards. You need to go lyn lynch the druids. <laughs> silly peasants. Um, an unexpected event has occurred in Kratas. A magical bird of wondrous colours has been found. Small gems were hidden in its feathers. Two fire gems, one air gem, and two earth gems. Not bad. And uh, an unexpected event has occurred in New Mecria. A miracle has been performed. Unfortunately, the miracle worker adheres to a rival faith. Uh, this is a throne province, so maybe a miracle worker from Lunawatia came in and performed a miracle. Not good. My dominion's actually quite weak on this uh, seafront um, near Nom. Nom is actually very strong for my dominion, but the uh, other provinces are not, uh, which is annoying. I may need to send some priests there to sort that out. Um, we're still trying to destroy the gate in Syria, uh, but on to the battles. There's a battle in uh, Kolomagor, and this was um, this was Syria bringing some of their men out of the uh, the depths to come and fight us. Uh, I noticed they had this conjurer here. I think he probably came from a random event. Um, but he's not very powerful, and there's very few undead here. And with our uh, astral mage, Mamor, he can just cast solar rays, and as you can see, he's doing quite a good job killing the undead with those solar rays. Uh, and the small unit of heavy cavalry we have is more than a match for these undead, uh, including the goblins in the province defense. They should be more than a match for the uh, long deads. So I'm just going to speed it up. As you can see, they can just quickly carve their way through the soulless ranks. And we even managed to kill the Kundra and the, uh, the Rust Mage. Yes, we killed the Kundra and the Vicar. So we killed 27 men for no losses. 
It's a good battle. Um, good battle. Uh, there was a battle in uh, Deep Wagor. This was for the uh, Throne of Ascension. So we were attacking Syria in the underground for their throne. Solvin is now a very small unit of men, but he's still a dragon, so he should be just fine. And he was built... He, I did build him for early expansion, which means that he is still very powerful in uh, late-game battles. Uh, we're not late-game, of course. We're still... I'd still consider us in the early game. We're in the year four, so our magic's still not very powerful, especially since it is slow magic research. Uh, but yes, we win that with only losing three sacreds, so we have the throne. We have the throne now. So let's go take a look at that throne. Uh, there is a great silver mine, and a gold deposit, so this produces 120 gold. And the brass throne, which brings a further 50 gold. I think we found the problem to our, our treasury deficits, and it was, uh, we didn't own this province. <laughs> it also provides fire and earth gems, which is very useful, given that those are our two main types of magic. Or, at least... Aside from blood magic, earth magic being the easiest one for gems. Um, and we are going to... I would like to build a bigger fortress here. So I'm going to need a little bit more gold. Which means I'm going to just have my commander patrol, see if he can catch any scouts. Uh, we can only recruit cavemen here. I mean, they might fill the role of what the colossi warriors do. So I'll tell you what, I am going to recruit 10 cavemen. Uh, just to bulk up my sacred force. Uh, I think the cavemen are also, yeah, they're also fire resistant, so, yeah, alright, we'll take some cavemen, and whilst we're fighting down in the caves, the uh, dark vision is quite useful, uh, since my goblins don't actually have dark vision, uh, they're forest goblins, not cave goblins, so yeah, so they don't have dark vision. Um, we are almost done on construction, but we need to continue that, I'm just taking a look at construction 5, um, erect graven idol. Three fire magic, one nature magic. If I empowered my god, I could do this. Fashions a large wooden idol and builds it into the likeness of dead heroes from ages past. A great ritual is then performed which snares powerful elemental and nature spirits. Binds them to the structure in service to the descendants of those inscribed upon it. The idol is magically powerful and resistant to weapons. It cannot move, however. The spirits can manifest for short periods to perform tasks or to defend against attack. The local populace may take to worshipping the idol, diverting faith away from the true god. So for 25 fire gems I can create a, um, a magical idol. It will probably be a heretic. Maybe a level 2 heretic? Possibly worse. I don't think I'll do this. I, I, I might do it if I ever bother to enhance Solve's uh, nature magic or if I find a fire nature mage I may cast a spell but until I do uh, I don't think I'll focus on that. Um, we will be able to cast, however. Most of these earth spells we will eventually get access to, so I'll take a look at them. We get the Clockwork Smith. Uh, the mage creates a mechanical smith. A Clockwork Smith is an advanced automaton constructed for the purpose of forging magical items. Clockwork Smiths are very efficient at creating magic items, and will use less gems as with each item created. Now, a lot of these may be from some mod, or enha uh, magic enhanced, uh, those two mods that I have for this game. Uh, but I mean, if they are from that mod, this is pretty cool. 15 earth gems to summon a smith commander. It's quite a strange, uh, I quite like it though. The ability to summon a commander whose express purpose is smithing items, um, and, but he's better for it, so eventually he will pay himself off. Um, and if you're creating factories, uh, for magic items, maybe, say, for example, a uh, I, I refer to factories sometimes when I talk about creating magic items, and what I mean is if you have enough wizards creating a set of magic items for quite cheap, like you basically budget yourself, say, seven fire gems and three earth gems, and you can create those many magic items worth per turn in a province, and recruit, a, recruit or conjure a chassis for a thug, and then you equip one of those thugs, and you're basically creating one of these thugs per turn, uh, which is quite powerful. Um, but it can only really be achieved if you have access to earth magic, because you need to be able to reduce the amount of gems you're spending to make the thugs actually worth using, if that makes sense. Um, so yes, uh, Clockwork Smiths. Uh, I can create these. My Paramount Sun Pont uh, Pontifexes can make Clockwork Smiths. Without any in, uh, any empowerment, they can just make them. So this will be an outlet for my 
It's effectively, they, mm, 15 Earth Gems, that's the same you would pay for a um, Dwarven Hammer. So maybe it's like an alternate way of getting Dwarven Hammers with Construction 5. That's quite nice. Um, Alright then. Uh, we can also make Clockwork Horrors, which are, they're definitely in the base game. Um, not bad, uh, you can use them to clear chaff. They're very good at killing um, weekly uh, low protection units. They're good at killing low protection units, but they, yeah, they're not that strong, really. Uh, I wouldn't rely on them. And clockwork units wind down as the battle continues, so they they fatigue out very quickly. But then they just get in the way, because uh, clockwork units generally have fairly high protection. So even when they wind down, they're sort of like a barrier that your opponent has to chop through or bash through. So they're not bad. Uh, crushers. Uh, it's a giant rock, basically. Um, it's a golem. Um, not bad thug chassis, actually. Uh, if you if you cast Gift of Reason on them, I think. Yeah. Uh, but it's a bit expensive. Not bad, though. Not bad. It's not bad. But if you don't have access to astral magic to create um, these golems, uh, it's an alternative if you have earth and nature. And nature gems are generally quite high income because... Well, you get a lot of nature sites. So, yes, that's not a bad idea. Uh, a bit pricey, though. Uh, the mechanical monster. Uh, a mechanical monster in the shape of a scorpion covered with thick iron plates. It has metal claws, a stinger, and it also has a poison attack. The creation is very effective at tearing down castle walls. It's almost invulnerable and is unaffected by heat, cold, shock, and poison. It is mindless, magical being. So it's like an alternative to the uh, crusher. I think the crush is probably better at breaking down walls, but the uh, mechanical monster seems like it's more useful for actually going through the gate once you've actually taken the walls down. Uh, the crushes can be a bit slow for clearing units inside of a gatehouse, they can get stuck there and just killed. Uh, these seem, because they have three attacks, being a scorpion, three or four attacks, they would clear through units in a gatehouse much faster. And being metal, they um, should have higher protection. So I may look into summoning some of them as well. And finally, the Mechanical Giant, which is a commander. Uh, a Mechanical Giant covered with thick iron plates. He stands 10 feet tall, is almost invulnerable, and is unaffected by heat, cold, shock, and poison. Uh, I think this sounds like a some odd thing, but it also sounds like an Earth Gem Thug Chassis. So I will definitely make one of them to have a look at their stats. They could come in very useful. And since I am going to for Construction 6, I will be able to make some quite powerful magic items. Um, I, I think another thing Magic Enhance did, if you look in my forging, uh, you can't make uh, Frost and Firebrands at level 4 construction. I think they put them on level 6, but then they, they moved some of the level 6 con construction items to level 4 to make up for it. Um, I think I think that's what they did. So yes, uh, no firebrands until we get there. So yes, construction six we're going for. We would like construction six. On with the messages. Um, actually no, did I have a look at all the messages? Yes we did. Oh, uh, we didn't have a look at the Battle of Belmar, did we? No we didn't. No we didn't. I'm sorry, I put this all, I put it off for a long time. Uh, the Battle of Belmar. We received a message from Syria. We have battled their god. Um, I'll show you what the message says once we've won the fight. Um, or lose the fight. You'll see. You shall see. You might get to see. You might. Mm, I think the crush is still a bit too slow. So we, we may not even see the uh, crusher get into combat. He has moved up. Mm, ah, the goblins overtook him. He may filter in between the goblins and start fighting the cyclops, which would be good. Go, my goblins. Surround him. Surround the Cyclops, the horror mark Cyclops. Uh, he, he can only crush one goblin per round, so we are overwhelming him. Alright, let's speed this up. We have the Cyclops completely surrounded and he's taking damage. 
and you can only kill one unit per round. His fatigue is increasing and every single attack. So this is one thing that I do need to point out. Uh, one of the tactical advantages of having small units, such as goblins, uh, is you put more of them in a square. Now, why is that useful? Why is that exactly useful? Because when they take a hit from an AoE spell like a fireball, as you've seen, it will kill the entire square. So I lose six men instead of three if you had humans. Um, the reason why is, especially with my sacred units who are dual wielding maces, they get two attacks. There are six of them in a square, so that means they are making 12 attacks from that square. Now every time a unit attacks another unit or another square, that unit or the unit that receives the attack loses two defense to, or two to their defense skill for each attack that they receive. So, because I have so many units attacking, a lot of them are actually reducing the Cyclops to zero defense skill. At least I think that's how it works. And uh, because of that, uh, we can land more hits on him, and thus roll more dice to attempt to break this very high protection that he has. So that is how we are eventually chipping him down, uh, by, by basically burning through his defense skill by having so many men attack. Uh, it does appear as if my units start to retreat due to his... Um, due to his fear aura, but uh, but our, our Lumber Golem goes in. Uh, he doesn't get the kill, I don't think. I think one of these routing sacred units actually gets the last hit on him, but um, yes, we did manage. This is the message from Syria. You killed our god! <laughs> this war will not end until the nation of Salt Noham is annihilated. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, Salt Noham isn't salty, but I think Syria might be. Syria might be a bit salty. Um, so, I don't think much of my army actually managed to rout. Uh, we've got one sacred unit there who routed. Uh, Syria has two of these heavy cavalry, so they can just join straight up with the force. Uh, Belmar has a huge force of men that routed. Uh, but that's fine, they're in the castle, so we'll just reorder them. Um, put all the archers away as well. We have a unit of... Mm, no, none of them routed. So, we're probably going to just take all of the men. All of the men here. Grab all of them, give them to uh, the Mountain Commander, uh, give these archers to our Prophet. Sure, why not? And actually, let's give all the cavalry to the Mountain Commander, give our Prophet the uh, Sacreds. We'll have these two spearmen out the front to act as arrow catchers. And we can have Hergni, be a lure. I don't think it will really work, but you never know. In fact, uh, we'll put him up here and we'll put these right up here as well. So if they have men on the flank, they might um, be lured into a trap that I can set. I'm going to have these set to guarding my prophet and such. Have these archers just set to fire in a line. Just about there. Let's move all of these guys back a bit. And we'll still have Oak Strong to lure the main bulk of their force. Uh, however, we're going to split up these sacred goblins into two regiments. We'll have one of them with Hergni. One of them is going to hold on attack the closest to enemy units. I'm going to have them set up back here in a line so they will advance through and get to Oak uh, Strong when they're needed. Uh, in fact, because of that, I'm just going to move my, my guard unit a bit further down so that they don't get in the way of the Sacred Goblins. And then I want... Um, I think I might put my prophet all the way back here. No, he needs to be able to smite. Yeah, alright then, we'll have them there. I want my uh, my other squad uh, to be sitting here, sort of on the flanks of the archers, uh, where these units are going to be uh, retreating. And they are going to be set on hold and attack. But because they are just on hold and attack, uh, they should just move forward. Um, and since if enemies come from the center of the map and uh, start to chase these spearmen here, then they will just move forward into them and intercept them, uh, giving my archers plenty of clear range to fire on them without my goblins getting in the way. So that should be quite effective, hopefully, quite effective. Um, so we'll try it out. We'll try that out. Uh, we'll move everyone to Kolomagor to trap the last of the Syrian army in the underground between my god and uh, my western force. Uh, I'm just going to make Mammor useful this turn and search, and Isla Tos can just patrol. 
Uh, there is a hole of one sacred goblin to pick up there, which I'm not too bothered about. And there's a... Oh, there are a few units there. I'll tell you what I'll do is I have this commander not doing anything. He can take the uh, heavy cavalry that we have. He can pick up these few units and go to Kodamagor as well. Um, and with him, he can take uh, an enormous cauldron of broth and then this bag of wine. And that way, he provides um, 170 resources. In fact, I'm going to get him to move straight to Kodamagor because I don't know if I've got the supply limit yet. No, I don't think we have the supply limit. Uh, we will almost have the supply limit, so actually I won't worry about it, because I think our Dominion should start spreading here now that we have a temple up. Um, and that should increase the uh, the cold, and the cold will mean that we get more supplies. So No worries. No worries in the uh, long run. So we'll pick up these units, move a endless bag of wine and enormous uh, cauldron of broth to the front line, so we have some more supplies. Uh, this wizard, in fact, can take another uh, bag of endless wine. In fact, they can take a uh, jar of fire as well, and uh, they can fly over to Syria uh, to join the siege force. And I will set them to be a Sabbath master um, around about... where are they? Uh, so here they are. They're uh, right here, and they can just be sat um, at the back, because they have some useful items that I'd rather not lose. Uh, but, never mind. If they do lose them, it's not a particular issue. Uh, it's just nice to have a lot of supply uh, limit in my armies. I know Narek is carrying a cauldron of broth already, but well, we'll, we'll, we'll bring some more. There's no reason not to... Uh, this gnome here, um, what can he do? He can't cast any ritual spells. He's pretty... He can't, I can't boost his uh, earth magic. So he could do some research. Just for the time being. I really want to get some dwarven hammers. I have the capability to get them, so I should. Uh, really. Mm, okay. You were casting Ball of Blood, I think, so... Uh, Duvan doesn't actually have that much unrest, so I'm going to outfit a few more uh, characters with Dousing Rods and have them Blood Hunt. And now, I think I... Mm, I gave that Scepter away. No, I didn't. Uh, Ergen should... Uh, yes, a Scepter of Authority. And he can also take uh, this bag of wine. Why not? Uh, just to give a few more supplies to Golden Range. We're almost not using any. Um, and that is... Um, it's important. If you if you go under siege and your opponent tries to starve you out, uh, but you have less supply usage, so if you have less than zero supply usage, effectively you have enough nature mages or items creating supplies to basically sit inside the castle walls and never run out of supplies. They will have to siege you until you die of old age. <laughs> and nature wizards take a really long time to kill with old age, because for every point of nature magic you have... Um, Alright, so if a creature can lose years by taking fire magic, so they lose two years of their life for every fire magic that they gain, they can also gain 25 years of life by getting nature magic. So very powerful nature mages can live for hundreds of years, and there's nothing you can do about it. So it's quite. It can be. It can. It's pretty much you shouldn't siege. If a nation has strong nature magic, don't siege them, um, and try and wait for them to run out of supplies. As soon as you break the gate down, you might as well just storm the castle, so you stop them from summoning so many creatures, because there's no way you're going to starve them out. Uh, whereas if you're sieging a uh, giant nation, and uh, so giants have to eat more supplies. So if you know you've got a lot of giantish units trapped inside a castle, just starve them out because they'll eat all the supplies really quickly um, because they're giants. Uh, and if you're under siege and you have a lot of giants, you should try and sally forth because your giants will probably do better on the battlefield than they would just sitting there. Um, I'm going to need a new commander here, I just realised. I don't have enough commanders for the squad usage, so I'm actually going to recruit an elite high chieftain uh, just because. I don't think I'm going to recruit more wizards this turn. I'm my gold is running not low, but it's not exactly great either. And I need one more colossi axeman, and I'm going to need. Well, I got seven skirmishes, so 
another three skirmishers, that'll bring it to 30. I could do with another... Hmm, how many archers are here? 35. Hmm. Ooh, one, two, three, four, five. Could do with a lot of archers, actually. I want to make sure Golden Range has plenty of defenders, so I don't need to worry about it. The longer, I, the less I have to worry about my Eastern Front, the more I can worry about the war in the underground. So by fortifying there, and also I want to fortify Mexico a bit. So Mexico, decent force. Uh, they have some cavalry. They've got a bunch of spearmen. You know, I'll train some more spearmen here as well. I'll train another ten spearmen as well. It's good stuff. Uh, Major's moving back into the labs. Um, I am aware this turn is uh, taking quite a long time. Again, I might. Um, this might be the first. Uh, oh, three, three death. I know it's. I know it's not my dominion, but I don't think Lunawatia has death, do they? Is this Lunawatia? Now, if this is Lunawatia's uh, domain, they have growth. If this is Syria's domain. Syria has growth. This province has enemy domain, which looks like Syria's, really, um, except uh, because Lunawatia actually has um, uh, production misfortune, I think, uh, with a lot of magic. Yeah. Uh, this has three death. What this signifies is that Runia has some very powerful death magic sites, or um, maybe not death magic sites, but blood magic sites as well, perhaps. So what I'm going to do is get this uh, Major Nom and set him to Bowl of Blood, and he's going to—he wants to cast it on Deeper Gore first. But I'm going to get—I'm going to force him to cast it on Runia first. Um, I want to see if this has a very powerful blood site that's causing all this death scale, and if it's not a blood site, it's almost definitely a death site. So I need a death mage, and I don't know how I'm going to get one. It's possible I can get a death mage from a blood site. I might find like a necromancer's coven, and then you can recruit necromancers. I think you can get necromancers with blood magic by using blood magic to find them. Uh, this scout, um, I'm going to send him into the underground as well. Uh, I want him to probably move into the chambers underneath. That's a good idea. Um, so Ergen here, uh, he can wait. Uh, he can hold a lot more men as well. But he can't hold any more squads. So he's going to have the spearmen and the archers. And the other, the uh, the goblin elite chieftain is going to have all the um, swordsmen, axemen. So I can take these spearmen and add them in there. Right. Uh, my nature mage here, I want him to... Now, I was talking about items I may wish to forge. Um, lum my Lumber Construct has incredibly high poison resistance, uh, which makes this, the Snake Bladder Stick, actually kind of funny. Um, basically, whenever he hits someone with it, it creates a poison cloud, and it's not a very powerful poison cloud. But with his high protection, uh, he could walk into a province on his own, just, yeah, just by himself, and he could just start hitting people with the Snake Bladder Stick, and they'd all die of poison. Um, unless they're poison resistant, which I don't think the uh, Avite Giants are. Ooh! Oh dear. The enemy's god is here. Ah, that makes me think that with these two large armies, they're about to invade this throne of ascension. Um, so yes. Anyway, uh, back to forging. Uh, yes, I also have access to the Vine Whip, but it's not great. Um, I don't find... It's useful if you're fighting a... Um, like, if I was fighting the Cyclops, thankfully we've killed him, so we don't need to worry about that. But if I gave the Vine Whip to um, Oak Strong, then that would help him entangle the Cyclops. To reduce the amount of attacks the Cyclops got on him, but the Cyclops probably would have resisted it magically, or um, would have just broken out of it using his high strength. Uh, anyway, we have the Whip of Command, which is useful for commanding slaves, but nothing else. Um, yeah, we, we don't have slaves, so yeah, we, we don't want the Whip of Command, it's not very useful. Uh, the Rat Tail. Now, this gives Animal War and Taskmaster. Um, I think Animal Or Does that help them boost their command of animals? I can't remember. I, th I can't remember if it does. Um, I might make one to find out. Uh, I think this is a magic enhanced thing. Uh, the Axe of the Berserker. It gives you plus four strength, quickness, and two attacks. 
uh, for only five nature gems. Uh, but I believe uh, you go berserk. So, whoever you give this to, uh, you can't, you can't, they can't be a wizard. They just have to be a, just a, a thug, just a random thug. Um, however, I am thinking of crafting one for my uh, barbarian. In fact, I'm thinking of crafting two <laughs> to give to my barbarian to go into the arena. But uh, it, one, it does give quickness, so maybe two is a bit overkill. But I think of uh, crafting one may be a good idea. Uh, it, now, with a powerful uh, uh, um, nature mage, I could craft the Staff of Gaia, but Gaia power is only really useful. Yeah, all friendly animal mages gain one nature boost. Now, I don't have any animal mages. Uh, I don't think my, na my mages count as animals. No, they don't count as animals. So, yeah, I'm not sure how I would use that. But it is available to me um, with Oakstrong. Oakstrong can craft uh, the Staff of Gaia. Uh, vine bow, I don't find that particularly useful. Um, vine shield, though. Now this is very, very good. The vine shield is a... Um, it's basically just a common, a very, very common pick for thugs. Uh, so is the eye shield, actually. The eye shield's very good as well. Um, but the eye shield is more useful if you're fighting other thugs, because you can blind them, whereas the vine shield's better against chaff. Uh, but I have, thanks to Magic Enhanced, uh, there's some new Fire Magic craftables that are actually quite good against chaff as well. Uh, so we'll take a look at them. This is just my act. This is just Nature Magic. These are all the things I can craft with uh, Nature Magic. Uh, the other thing I was thinking of building was a few Horns of Valor for my commanders. It's not bad. Keep my goblins in the battle. It's only five Nature Gems, and we can drop that to three Nature Gems uh, with the Dwarven Hammer. Um, Barkseed Amulets, uh, not bad for my human commanders. If I equip a human commander with a Barkskin Amulet and Fireplate, he ends up with like 22 protection, which is pretty crazy. Um, for only what, like... I know it's 10 gems to spend on a commander, but that commander won't just get killed immediately, like Narek. Narek's currently holy pyring all the undead, and uh, also feeding my army, so I don't want him to die. And the Barkskin and the Fireplate gives him a protection of 22, so yeah. It's like he's wearing uh, black steel just without the encumbrance. Uh, he doesn't even get. He's even fire resistant because he's still wearing the, uh, the flambeau. Yeah, there you go. Not bad. Uh, but we could craft. What I thought, aside from that, was um, poison resistance may be useful. Oh my god. Um, but if I did give him a poison resistance thing, it would be the astral serpent um, because it's an extra attack as well. Uh, it basically um, you equip it to a character and it will lash out and hit people with a death poison uh, when you're in melee with them. So that might be useful for both boosting his poison resistance against weak poisons and also giving him an extra attack. Uh, rings of regen and rings of uh, res uh, amulets resilience, both brilliant items. Always consider these items um, when making a thug. Uh, I probably will give a ring of regen to my god. Probably will. Um, miraculous cure elixir, good for curing diseases. Only diseases, though. Um, and a nature four is quite hard to get, especially on my nation where I don't have natural access to nature magic. Uh, in fact, getting nature four, I think, is quite difficult for me right now. Uh, anyway, onwards. Uh, the other item I thought that may be useful: uh, the amulet of giants, uh, because it increases strength. And I could give this to my goblin commanders, and then they would be the size of human commanders, but be extra strong as well. Um, and given that my prophet, this, is, this was the main reason I was thinking of doing this, my prophet has the skill heroic strength, meaning that he already has 16 strength. He, in enemy dominion, in an enemy 3 dominion zone, he has, uh, he still has 16 strength. He, he is losing a lot of hit points though. But I think when I enlarge him with the giant amulet, he will also get more hit points. So, I may get a giant amulet for my uh, goblin commander here. In fact, I might get one for Hergony as well. For he has very strong defense skills, so I could actually start putting Hergony on the front line uh, if I gave him some better armor as well. Because these high experience commanders, they have good stats. Like, if you put them inside of your regiments, there's with, a, with decent enough gear, they're not actually that likely to die, so... Uh, I did forget to boost Belmar's province defense. I want province defense to be a, be about ten, maybe maybe twenty in Belmar. It's a castle, so 
I'll probably have Wizards there. Would like to have some bronze defense. It has a lab, so I probably will put Wizards there. But anyway, that was uh, that was me going over some of the forging that I have the option of doing, and these catch arms. Uh, when I get round to summoning some succubi, I will probably build some catch arms. Um, I think what I am going to do is build a uh, Horn of Valor. I'm going to build a few of them um, once I get these uh, wizards back, because if my commanders aren't carrying um, cauldrons of broth. Uh, or bags of endless wine, they should be carrying Horns of Valor. And then I can prioritize giving those commanders um, items for extra units, and then they can like stack them up so they can lead 200 units with a plus one on all their morale instead of leading 60 units with no bonus to morale. Um, so the more coordinated armies I can field, the better. I think I want this com this uh, hmm. uh I want this commander. Now I want to start making these brazen vessels, they're very very good, but I need someone who's very powerful in blood magic to do it. And that's gonna be difficult. That will be difficult to get. Um I think I'm gonna get him to forge another scepter of authority. Just because I am getting more commanders and they will need them uh, to lead all of my massive hordes of goblins, uh, who are not actually that massive right now, but we are in the middle of a war, so it's very unlikely your army's numbers are going to go up during a war, because uh, you'll be spending all your gold and etc, etc. So, yes, yeah, so we've almost preached out all the Dominion in Syria as well. So hopefully, hopefully, by preaching that out, uh, we can invade the castle without such a terrible fatigue malice. Now, I know this video has actually already been quite long, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to record the rest of Fall in um, single parts uh, and see how that works out. Uh, just to spice it up a little bit, maybe see if I prefer it. Uh, the turns are getting longer, so I think by the end of the game I am going to just have to do it as one turn at a time anyway. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the stage I need to do it at, but uh, I ramble a lot. I did say this wasn't going to be a tutorial series, but I explained so much stuff that <laughs> I guess it kind of is as well. Anyway, yes, this will be the end of the episode, so next episode will be the middle of fall in year four of the Ascension Wars. I will leave it here on the message screen. It's been me, Shaft Commander Coffee. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.